All right, we just critiqued and finished our spot illustration assignment. And these spot illustrations are free floating. So they are PNGs that will take whatever background we give them, just like a logo, right? Free floating like this. And what I would like you to see is the versatility of these. So if we look at my example of my spot illustration from assignment seven, I now have to think, how do I want it to best be used? And you notice I don't have any products yet. So we're gonna be thinking about that. So I made a sketch, I made vector, vector line work. I took that vector line work into Photoshop and then I colored behind it. And I have a duotone coloring, full spectrum coloring, color holds, like the little glints on top of the blacks, just everything thrown at this. It's probably a little too much, right? But for a certain product that might work really well, like a sticker. But if it's going to go on a t-shirt, I might need to dial it back a little bit, make it more graphic, maybe darken the line work again. So a spot illustration has various lives. And to get a sense of that, I want you to go to your links page, click on Redbubble, and and uh, start selling your art in Redbubble. I'm gonna go ahead and log in to my account and add this. And let's see, if I look at my dashboard, oh, that's not what I wanted. <laughs> if I look at, oh, I wanted to see my past students. How did they show that to me? Anyway, this is my Redbubble page. This is some stuff. But I was interested in seeing the people I'm following. So I follow past students. Do people ever pronounce your last name Carl Frey? Of course they do. All right. So let's look at what this past student is doing now. He has a, a whole series he calls The Binding of Isaac. He sells t-shirts with that spot illustration. <coughs> I want to see his recent stuff. And then sometimes he'll combine the spot illustration with text, right? And that's what assignment eight is all about. So you make a spot illustration, but then you're gonna do a text solution around it that helps give it context. So this is a little fan art. So if we look at, if I go to my page and I go to um, add a new artwork, this is why I want you all to play with Redbubble a little bit. All I'm going to do is find my Assignment 7 best quality PNG, the one I uploaded to uh, Photo Bucket. So it's right there, right? Remember that the PNG needs to have no background around it or it really limits its flexibility, its uses. You upload it, it uploads quickly. And then it will start to show you how it will look on different products. And you get to decide whether they're enabled or disabled, right? So let's look at the most basic. If I edit the t-shirt, I can pick a basic color behind it that I like. I tend to like the heather gray. Then I can size it, right? It shows you the the sizing placement. And then you just say apply and you can see it on different types of shirts and you can just start selling it right away as long as you have the intellectual property. So I never like how things look on v-necks but people like v-necks. Um, hoodies, you know, whatever it is. So that's the versatility of a spot illustration. If you pay a little bit more, you can make it even bigger on the on the shirt. Right. 
You can see how that looks. Then they have their kind of fancier fabrics. But look, the spot illustration doesn't work on this fancy fabric very well. I'd have to make it kind of small and that looks odd. And white's terrible. So instead, what you can do is you can tile the pattern. Right? And make a pattern out of it, either offset or lined up. And then you can pick a background color. Ooh. Yeah, it just really depends. The problem is when you use it automatically like this, the spacing between is determined by just an algorithm of the space around your, your illustration. But realize that spot illustrations can become something more. I like the red. There we go, kind of rusty. Can become something more than just one image, right? If you buy your own work on paying yourself, is that a discount? <laughs> <laughs> no, the way they do it is if you, you buy your own work, you're just paying for the production costs and they don't they charge you less because you're not getting the artist's commission on top of it. Yeah, and that's how these companies, that's how the business model for these companies works, right? A lot of artists put their stuff up just to buy it for themselves because I don't have the ability to make all these products on my own, right? Phone cases. So my favorite product is the sticker. It's kind of the most basic, but you have to be careful with the sticker, especially with color holds and with like outer glows. So look what it did to the um, the really soft opacity glow I had around my tail. It did something a little weird with the sticker. So sometimes you have to change things a little bit depending on how you're using them. Right. But I, what, it kind of works well as a clock. <laughs> but this is a nice way to just understand, and the reason I want you all to play with it, understand the versatility of a spot illustration and what makes one successful and what makes one not so successful. Okay, then you, you put in your stuff and you can say whether you want anyone to be able to view it or if only you can view it. Now, if you're worried at all about the intellectual property of it, check only you, right? So that's something you can play with. Now let's make it better. Because one, one product you can get is a poster. And this is actually what I sell the most of, posters and, and art prints. So let's see, where are those? Prints, cards, and posters. So it's thinking if you're gonna want a poster of this, you can pick a background color, right? But it's thinking because the, Spot illustration is mostly horizontal. It's doing a horizontal poster. So this is not a great use, right? That's not the way my work looks the best, in my opinion, if I want it to be a poster. So our next project is to design the poster. So if you go to assignment eight, you'll see how we take our spot illustration. You can see past student examples, past instructor examples, and we add text around it, right? sometimes really in a complicated way, sometimes in a really straightforward way. So here's a nice example. But before we can put the text with our spot illustration, we have to think, well, what text do we want? And how do we want it to look? So this is what's called text blocking, a little sketch. And I would like you to all do a sketch. You can do it digitally if you like. And then we are going to turn that text that we've blocked out in a variety of different ways into vectors, into black vectors, which we then color. And then we add with our spot illustration onto a background for a poster. However that text might be. And we also can add other things for the poster, right? We can composite in different textures. The text can be subtle. It can be bold. 
It can be bigger than the actual illustration. Right? It can be integrated in lots of different ways. But that's what we're going for. Now, just like coloring, your text can't save a bad spot illustration, but it can definitely add to it. Right? And if it's done really poorly, it can kind of ruin it. So we can't, it's not just, you know, picking a typeface and just putting it in. We have to customize it so it really fits the project. So how do we start? Well, you start with your PNG. So I'm going to open up my PNG of my spot illustration, fully colored, in Photoshop. This is a poster I'm working on for our arts division right now. This was a spot illustration, right? That's kind of our, our version of Nico. I call him Nico at the Opera for our Fine and Performing Arts division here. But there needed to be a lot of information on this poster. Because sometimes posters have that requirement. If it's like a music concert poster, if it's an event poster like this, there's lots of different things going on. This is happening next week, guys, November 15th. You'll get to look at all the different studios, see examples of student work. And there's a, a play opening and a reception for it that night. But anyway, there's a lot of elements here beyond just the spot illustration. But I started with the spot illustration and then I tried to choose things, typefaces, solutions, textures that all work. And if we look up really close at it, you'll see that there's a lot of different textures going on, this half dot pattern. So we're going to be learning how to do color separations as well so that we can play with those different aspects. But all the, all the elements are vectors, except for the textural elements, so that everything prints cleanly at whatever size. So how can we start that process? Let's open up our PNG in Photoshop, the same one you would upload to Redbubble, and then immediately let's make more space around it. So I'm gonna to go to Image, Canvas Size, and I'm going to make it 30 inches wide by 40 inches tall. It's going to be way too big. Then hit Command 0 so it all fits. And then I want you to use the Crop tool right there underneath the magic wand. And I want you to hold Shift and Option to shrink around your poster. It keeps your spot illustration perfectly centered. This is just a nice default placement until it feels comfortable. Like I'm thinking, okay, that's the kind of poster I want. Then you can go to image size and you see what size you have. So I have basically 14 by 18 at 350 pixels per inch. As long as your spot illustration is 350 pixels per inch at a good printable size, you can make your poster as large as you want. We can print in this lab up to 17 by 22 inches. The closest standard size to that is 16 by 20. So this fits nicely into that, right? This could easily be made into a 16 by 20 print. Okay, the next thing, I need to add a layer because this is my PNG, right? It's just empty space. So I add a layer and I'm going to fill it, edit, fill with white. Just so I have a blank space. Then I'm going to make a border. So I'm going to use the marquee tool, the rectangular marquee tool. And I'm going to hold down shift to make a perfect square. And try to make it even on all sides. And then I'm going to do command T and I'm going to pull it down so that it's a little bit wider at the bottom the space I'm leaving, then on the sides, this is how you create a border, right? Then I hit return, and then I hit command J to duplicate it. And then I'm gonna fill that in with gray, 50% gray. So the way I did it, wait, what happened? <laughs> so I'm duplicating that selection, and then I'm filling that layer, edit, fill. Oh, I don't want 